So in this video we're going to look at some of the things you need to be aware of when working with numbers in JavaScript and we'll also look at some of the built in JavaScript functions for doing some simple mathematical operations. So a few lessons ago when we looked at data types we came across the parse int function and the parse float function. So if you remember they take a string and they actually convert it into a numerical value. This is so we can do some mathematical operations like addition and subtraction on the number rather than actually modifying the string itself. So that's fine if you actually pass in a number inside of the string, but what happens if you pass something else inside there that doesn't contain an actual number? So if we pass cat for example, you'll see on the right hand side the console comes back with NAN, which is basically short for not a number. So when you come across a bit of badly written JavaScript on a web page, sometimes you might see this, uh, and it's basically when a bit of code on the site has tried to get some value from a string and there's actually no number within it. And even if there is a number in part of the string, if, if it's JavaScript can't work out where it is, then you'll still get this not a number response. But as you can see, if there is a number at the start of the string, JavaScript will take that as the value that you're trying to parse and it will just ignore everything else in the string. So it's always good to be a little bit careful when you're using the parse int or parse float functions and you might want to check the response that you get back in case it's not the number that you were expecting. Another thing that you might want to know how to do is when you're working with floating point numbers you can see when JavaScript displays it on the console it actually removes any trailing zeros from the end. Which is fine because they don't need to be there and if you're going to do any calculations it won't make a difference if it's not there but if you're actually trying to display this to the user you might want JavaScript to display that last zero. So we can do this by calling a function on the number and the function is called toFixed and the number that you pass inside the parentheses is saying how many digits do we want after the decimal point. And you can see now we're getting 15.70. And the more eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed something about the result in the console and that is that the value has been converted into a string and we can actually confirm that by just using the type of operator. So in order to display that last zero, JavaScript has converted 15.70 into a string, which is fine if we're just displaying this to the user, but then if you were going to do some more operations on the value, like some addition or subtraction, you'd have to convert it back into a float, or at least store this string as a separate variable. It's just something to be careful of if you are going to use this toFixed function within your code. So JavaScript provides you with a lot of built-in functions for dealing with mathematical operations. And these range from complex functions like dealing with cosine, tangent, hypotenuse and logarithmic values, all the way down to more common use things like generating random numbers. So we'll have a look at a few of those now, and you access these from the math object which is present wherever you can use JavaScript. So one of the built-in functions we can access is the math.round function, and if you think back to being at school and you had to round numbers up and down, uh, this basically takes a decimal point number and rounds it up or down to a whole number. So if I pass in the value of 1.2, you can see JavaScript returns a whole number of 1. Of course if I put a number which is larger than 1.5 it rounds it up to 2 and indeed it also if I put in a number of 1.5 rounds it up to 2 as well. So there are two other functions available which do a similar job to this but allow you to control whether you want to round up or down respectively and they are math.seal, uh, short for ceiling I presume, and math.floor. So in these two functions if I pass the value of 1.2 you can see math.seal rounds it up even though it's closer to 1 than it is to 2. It actually rounds that number up to a value of 2 and math.floor rounds the 1.2 down to 1. And if we were to change math.floor to say 1.8, you can see it always goes downwards and rounds it down to the lowest whole number. So those functions are really handy if you want to get rid of the decimal point from a number and you've got several options there of when and you've got complete control there if you want to round down or up. So probably the most common thing that people want to do with JavaScript numbers is to generate a random number. Uh, it's so useful for so many things. And luckily the JavaScript library has got this built in for us. So we can generate a number just by using maths.random. But you can see the number it gives us back is a really long decimal number. And that's because math.random just gives us a number between 0 and 1. So usually that's not what we want, we usually want a number in between a particular range. So for example if we wanted a number between 0 and 100, we would say math.random and then multiply that result by 100. 
And you can see I've got 59 here, but I don't really need the rest of the decimal value of the number. So we can use one of the above functions, math.round, math.seal, or math.floor, to actually round that to a whole number. And it's up to you what, which one you want to use, depending on your use case. But I'm just going to go for math.round. And you can see this time it's generated a number of 51 for me, and that's a whole number that I could use somewhere else in my program to do something else. So one final function that's built into JavaScript that is useful for mathematical purposes is the math.absolute function. And all this does really is take a number in JavaScript and remove the negative sign if it is present. So for example, if I pass a value of minus 5, you'll see the result I get is just 5. And of course, if I just put a positive number in there, I still get 5. So this can be really useful if you want to work out distances or how far a number is away from 0. And you're not really worried about whether it's a positive or a negative number. So as with strings in JavaScript, there are a load more functions built in that you can make use of. I'll provide you with a link so that you can go through those when you have some time. But it'd be worth spending a bit of time in the console now having a go with these different mathematical functions, see if you can generate some random numbers. And when you feel confident with that, you can move on to the next lesson.